G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. What are you looking at? Well, this is the new 32-channel auto scan FPV receiver from Quantum. That's Quantum without a T. There's no T in Quantum. It's not Quantum. And it's from Hobby King, of course. Uh, this is a 5.8 gigahertz video receiver. And what you're looking at is the inside, because I've already taken the covers off, you know. It's always good to take a look at the build quality of these things. And I'm going to walk you around what you find inside one of these little units. Well, let's... I'll actually go out a bit and pull out a bit here because I'm on macro and I can't quite get everything in. So just wait for the camera to focus. There we go. Lovely. Now I need to find something to point with because all I've got is this big blunt antenna because, yes, it comes with one of these. It doesn't come with our AMY one. It comes with this one. Here we go. This is the one it actually came with. Just a nondescript linear antenna. Ah, you know what I think of those. So let's start poking around inside this receiver and see what's in there. Well, first thing you notice, it's got this big OLED display. What's an OLED display? Well, it's not an LCD. It creates its own light. There's lots of little light emitting diodes, a matrix of light emitting diodes that light up. So you get brilliant display even in low light and high light conditions, you know, like sunlight and so forth. You can read what it says on the screen. That's excellent. Uh, a lot of these little receivers in the past have just had a channel indicator. This display has a whole lot more, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now, down here we've got our, uh, we've got two video jacks here, as you can see. So you can plug in two video cables. You've also got a power connector, which is a little micro barrel connector, I think, is it? Yeah, I think so. But here we've got something that's a little bit new. You don't see this very often on these receivers. It's an RSSI jack. So the received signal strength indicator. That's the voltage, which varies depending on how strong the signal is. They actually pass that out through a jack. So you could build a diversity setup using two of these and even my little cheap diversity controller that I did as a DIY, DIY project some time ago. So it makes it a lot more versatile. Now, underneath this OLED display, there's actually a microcontroller in there, an Atmel microcontroller hiding under there. You can't see it. And what we've got here is our power input jack. We've got some a little diode there, probably to revert, prevent you wiring up backwards and making the smoke come out. There's a switched mode regulator, a buck regulator, that drops the voltage down to the low levels this uses. This will run from two cells to three cells, I think, looking at the instructions. Yes, 7.4 volts to 12.6. So a two or three cell pack will drive this, no problems at all. I think it draws about 100 milliamps when it's running. Um, yeah, so there you go, not a real problem. I know some of the older receivers, the RC305, they use a linear regulator, just a three terminal regulator, which means they get really hot if you run them on three cells. This will not get nearly so hot. Your batteries will last longer with that little switched mode regulator. On the back, we've got the RF goodness, and <laughs> everything's in this module. Now, if I can find the thing, I think they're claiming um, minus 96 dBm receiver sensitivity here. That's quite high. That's a quite a high sensitivity. So it'll be interesting to see how it actually performs in the field. Considering that virtually all of these things use the same module, I think sometimes different manufacturers are a little bit more optimistic than others, but we will find out. Now, here we go. Um, there's not much else on the back of this board. It's a double-sided load, which means there's components on both sides. We've got, uh, these look like little ceramic resonators, perhaps. I'm not sure. I haven't looked. There's a little interface chip here, which is probably level shifting or, I'm not sure, multiplexer maybe. I don't know. haven't looked at it. And, yeah, that's really about it. On the top, we've got an SMA connector, I think. Yes, have a look. Yeah, SMA, not RPSMA. So the pin is in the plug, not in the, uh, the chassis mount end. There you go. That's what it looks like inside. And, of course, I've taken it out of its little smoky grey transparent plastic case, which looks quite nice as well. Time to put it back together and I'll show you how it works. And if you get one of these and like to pull it apart, there's no screws, just has these convenient little plastic catches here which snap into place. Look at that. So easy peasy to pull apart and put together and there's the writing on the back. 100 milliamps, minus 6, 96 dBm uh, sensitivity and quantum no T. There you go. That's what it looks like. It's kind of pretty and it's quite light. Um, unlike the metal cased ones, it's quite light and it doesn't have a metal case. Why? Because it doesn't need to get rid of all that heat that a linear voltage regulator produces because it's got a switch mode one. Okay, we've got two buttons. One of them is frame. I don't want to call it frame. It's the band. And the other one is the channel. So you just cycle through the bands or cycle through the channels. But if you hold this button down, I'll show you what happens. So there we go. There is the screen. Now this may look a little bit odd, the, the footage here, because I've slowed the shutter down on my camera so that it doesn't flicker because it, being an OLED display it does have a kind of annoying flicker through the camera if you just try and film it at the normal frame rates. So everything may be a little bit slow and blurred here. Now if I press the frame button you'll see that it, oops, it'll cycle through the, so we've got A, B, E, what happened to the others? 
and F. And again, you can cycle through the channels. But what happens that's very interesting is if I hold down the channel button, well, first of all, let's go to the next one. Whoops. Oh. Now let's go to A, and we'll go back to 1. Doesn't matter where you start from, but I want to start from A1. There we go. Oh. Um. A. Right, there we go. I hold down the channel button and watch what happens. Whoops, didn't hold down long enough. Here we go. Auto sets is scanning. It's flashing the word scanning up there. And it's stepping through each channel on each band. And it's also showing the frequency. See, it's got 5 point whatever gigahertz there. That is actually quite a handy little feature because if you need to make sure the channels you're using are legal in your country, you need to know the frequency. And although most transmitters and receivers come with a little chart that shows you what's watched, it's just so much easier if you can see on the screen what the channel is in terms of frequency. So this has stepped through all the channels and then it's gone back to where we started because I don't have an FPV transmitter operating. So it's not going to lock onto anything. Uh, there's other useful bits of information on the screen. As I said, it's, it's quite an informative little screen. We've got the signal strength up here should show. We've just got an antenna there because there's no signal. It's 0%. There's nothing to listen to because I've got nothing transmitting. Battery voltage is shown over here. We're running three cells, so that's fine. Um, and yeah, that's it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up a video transmitter and we'll see if it finds it. Okay, so I've got a video transmitter operating on band E, channel 5. I'm going to hold down the scan switch and let's see how this works. I'll just hold it down and notice I'll put the, the shutter speed on my camera back to normal so there'll be a bit of flickering here. Here we go. It's going through the entire band. A good thing it goes through the entire band. It doesn't, doesn't just stop when it reaches the signal. It goes right around to make sure it's getting the strongest signal so it's locked onto the right channel and not one that's nearby. So it should go to E5. There you go. It works. And as you can see now, the little display is showing us the signal strength and percent 61 percent which or 45 it varies just depending on where i put my hand because i don't have an antenna on this it's just working from what it picks up internally so there you go that the scanning works how good is that um what else can i tell you about this well i guess we'll have to take it out and try it in the field but before we do that i guess i should um, say a few words on why you'd buy one of these things i mean most video goggles have a built-in 5.8 gigahertz 32 channel or 40 channel receiver. So why would you buy a separate one? What is the point? Well, there's several reasons. You may have the really excellent uh, Hobby King, or a Quantum, without the T, the Quantum Video Visor version 2, which I've reviewed. There'll be a link in the description of this video. I've reviewed that. That's a really nice piece of FPV eyewear, and it's really uber cheap, but it doesn't come with a receiver. So if you've bought yourself a Quantum Video Visor, this looks like it'll be the perfect receiver to go with that. Lightweight, because that's important with the visor, because if you've got too much weight hanging off your head, your neck gets sore, and this, in its lightweight plastic case, is going to be the perfect little uh, receiver for that thing. It fits nicely in the little pocket provided, so that's very good. The other thing, of course, is that, as I said, it's, this has got an RSSI output. If you can see, it says RSSI. There it is. RSSI output. So you might want to take that signal and feed it into a diversity controller. As I said before, you can knock up a really cheap diversity controller. I'll put a link to that project in the description of this video as well. Then if you buy two of these, you can fit one with a helical antenna, another one with a omnidirectional antenna, and get the best of both worlds. You'll be able to fly along the beam of the directional antenna, but then when you get closer, you can fly all around yourself using the Omni, and the diversity controller will pick whichever receiver has the strongest signal. It's brilliant, it's excellent. That's a great way to fly, especially if you're, you're flying proximity and you want to go a little bit of distance. So yeah, there you go. And of course, you may have a base edition of some of the goggles, the older Fat Shark base editions that didn't have a video receiver at all. So you might need one, and this would be not a bad one to choose. The other thing, of course, is as I've pointed out in previous videos, you can get a lot more distance and a lot better, more consistent reception if you actually put your receiver up on a pole and run video wise down to your goggles. So if you're flying in an area where there may be dropouts, Using a receiver like this and running it on a pole, just a couple of meters, two or three meters, and then running a lead down to your goggles can give you a much better experience than using the inbuilt receiver in your goggles. So there you go. Now, what are the pros and cons of this? Well, I like the fact that it's lightweight. I like the fact it's got two video outputs, which is not uncommon for these. I love the fact it's got an RSSI output. I like the really nice, bright, easy to read, information filled screen. I like the cool LED, look at that blue, isn't that cool, yeah. Um, I like the fact it's got a switch mode power supply, so it's not going to get hot and waste my battery. The battery, for example, it says 100 milliamps. So if you've got a 1,000 milliamp hour battery, that'll give you about nine hours of safe 
uh, receiver operation. That's a long time from a from a little thousand milliamp hour battery. So that's really good. I know the old RC305s, they wasted so much power, you'd only get a couple of hours out of a battery that size. So yeah, all around, I love those positive features. Now, of course, nothing's perfect. It's not, you know, this isn't the perfect product and there are some downsides. First of all, it's not a 40 channel receiver. It won't do race band. And that's a bit of a shame, but if you're not flying mini quads and competitively in racing, it doesn't matter. You've still got 32 other channels to choose from. So, yep, what I will be doing in part two of this, I'm going to try this out in a number of scenarios. We're going to compare it to some of the other receivers on the market, compare it to the receiver in my SkyZone goggles, and we'll compare it to the receiver in a set of Fat Shark goggles and just see if it really lives up to that sensitivity claim, if it's really as sensitive as they say by, we'll do it by relative comparisons. I don't have the equipment on 5.8 gigahertz to measure to see whether that claim is absolutely true, but we'll get a relative indication of one versus the other. And finally, before I go, I should show you what else you get in the box. Well, you get video leads. Very interesting, you get two sets of video leads. One of them is a, you've got the male RCA connectors, that's this one. So there's the jack that goes into the bottom of your receiver, and it has a set of male RCAs. The other one, same thing, but female RCAs. That's brilliant because some screens, you may want to make yourself a little monitor set up so you can watch what's going on. You buy yourself a cheap screen for a car, and it comes with, ooh, it's got, those ones. So you'll need this cable. But other setups may have um, the other gender, so you'll need that cable. Saves you buying the little adapter you have to use to connect two connectors of the same gender together. So you can make your own LCD monitor, hand it around at FPV events, let people see what's going on. Another great use for this little device. You also get a lead for the RSSI. Hmm, great. If you're going to use your own DIY RSI controller or diversity controller, you probably just cut that off and wire it straight in. But hey, that's pretty cool. And you get a black one. I don't know why. Or maybe this is an alternative video output or something. I don't know. But it's just, hey, you get lots of wires, eh? It's pretty cool. You get the little brochure. Ta da! There you go. Auto scan. Doesn't tell you much. But you don't need to know much because it's pretty much plug and play. Pretty cool little product. So there you go. I'm happy with this little product so far but the proof will be in the put the, the proof will be in the testing i will uh, take it out strap it to a pole perhaps see how it goes and i'll give you a part two of this video very very soon once the weather clears again what a crap ass summer we're having we have one day of brilliant sunshine and the next day it's blowing and windy and gray there you go thanks for watching if you've got comments you've got questions on this little device put them in the comment section that youtube provides and i'll do my best to answer them and explain anything that i've overlooked in the meantime thanks for watching time for me to get Back to the bench.